probably the roughest thing I've ever seen in my life. I wanted to cry and vomit at the same time. So let us tell you what happened in Ning Binh. We are going to Ning Binh, Vietnam, which is supposed to be the Ha Long Bay of the land. It's supposed to be really, really gorgeous. And Daniel is particularly excited for today because it is a two and a half hour motorcycle ride through gorgeous mountains. Can't wait to show you. So we just finished taking all of our stuff downstairs and we're about to go <laughs> strap it all to the back of the motorbike and get going. I'm yeah. really stinking pumped. I'm so pumped. So guys, really quick, did you know that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with? <laughs> did you know that those five people don't actually have to be real friends of yours? I love scooter rides because I get to literally just binge listen to podcasts from people who inspire me, like Jenna Kutcher and John Lee Dumas. So I am super pumped because the average of the five people that I spend the most time with is this handsome fella. <laughs> So I'm a good person and a bunch of millionaires. So hopefully I will shortly follow suit. So as a part of having a motorbike and deciding that we are actually gonna motorbike through Vietnam, we got these racks and they literally only cost like 20 bucks. But the guy literally welded a bunch of places for us to put bags, thankfully. So, time to see how this one fits. So we have a beautiful motorbike, which uh, I recently bought and it's made my day. I'll put pictures and video and all the lovely stuff about it. But we got a new attachment for it where I can navigate so I'm not having to like ride down a Vietnamese highway like one handed while looking at a phone. It can just sit there and I can navigate. Uh, but this smart person has never done that before. And I have a phone case with all of my important cards in it. So my Florida driver's license, my ATM card, and my credit card. And I think I set the phone case on my lap and drove away and then didn't realize it was missing until like an hour and a half later. Yeah, and we didn't bring enough cash for the couple days that we were supposed yeah. to be in Ning Bing. So we literally got home and we're like... We we're like, we literally only have enough money to pay for the one night that we stayed there, the two meals that we had there, and then literally the gas home. We got home with 40,000 Vietnamese Viet dollars. Yeah, which is the equivalent of like 1.5 US dollars. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> we literally had three days booked in Ning Bing and we had to tell our amazing Ooh. host, Wang, yeah. like, Wang, I am so sorry, but we lost our wallet, we don't have an ATM card, and we can only pay you for tonight. So we're gonna have to leave tomorrow morning. And we also sadly had to leave before really seeing anything. Yeah. If you follow us on Instagram, you would have seen that we did do some really cool stories through Trang Ang. Uh, we'll go ahead and put some of those here. But we didn't get to do any of the boat tours or any of the, the cool sites to see. But I did wanna give you guys an opportunity to yeah. know about what's in Ning Bing because it's actually gorgeous. And we learned a lot from our host, which yes. was really awesome. And I know that there's 
not a lot of information on Ningbing on the internet. So if you're in Hanoi and trying to get to Ningbing, there's a few ways for you to get there. You can get there by motorbike. It's about two hours and a half, and it really wasn't super bad. Daniel's no. the expert driver. I don't drive for crap. But <laughs> um, if you're comfortable with that, it's not a terrible ride. And as a passenger, I wasn't terrified either. Another way to get to Ningbing is actually by bus. Hanoi has a lot of bus stations around, so just make sure that you book the right bus station. But it's about a two, two and a half hour ride, and it's very straightforward. I remember when we were driving on the highway, we passed so many buses yeah. with a lot of local Vietnamese. So it seems like it's the way that they travel between cities as well if they're not if they don't have a motorbike. Yeah. And something that Ningbing is known for, they call it the Ha Long Bay on land because it's just a bunch of karst limestone cliffs all through like rivers and you can drive through them. It's absolutely stunning. I actually kind of recommend that you guys go on motorbike anyway, just yeah. because you guys will have really awesome transportation while you're in Ningbing. And staying in Trang An is awesome. There's also a place in Ningbing called Tam Kok, but our host said that that's kind of like the touristy side and it's a little bit more expensive. If you wanted to take a boat tour down Trang An in the river boats, it's 200 Vietnamese dong per person, which comes out to about eight US dollars. There's also a viewpoint that's 500 steps high and you can see all of Ningbing from there so make sure that you go check that out and then come back to Hanoi and then you really can see the whole place in two days. I yeah. would even reckon if you get there early enough in the morning you could smash it all out in one day if you guys like really wanted to squeeze it in but that's ultimately up to you guys. Anyway that's a funny story. Yeah. Uh, Ningbing. Uh, that's the information we know because we didn't get to do a lot of it. We didn't get to basically do any of it. Because we had no money. Yeah. But we did get to drive there and then come back straight to Hanoi. And we did actually help out a guy who really needed it. I almost think that this oh, was meant yeah. to be. Uh, Daniel, yeah. take it away. We were meant to come back early. So, obviously, I do not recommend driving a motorbike in Vietnam if you're not experienced. I was overhearing some backpackers the other day that are like, oh, I've never driven a motorbike, but how hard can it be? And I'm like, you will literally You'll die. die. And we learned this, thankfully not by our own experience, because I am a, I am experienced on motorbikes. And he's really good at it. He just likes it. <laughs> Thank I you. don't get it. I love it. But we ended up going down. We were probably about 30 minutes outside of Hanoi. And we were coming back. And all of a sudden, the road went from a two lane to a six lane, like out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, the two lane that you were on turned into a one way coming the direction at you and you had to skirt over to the right really fast like With out of no nowhere. no signs guys. No signs, nothing. There was one little sign in the middle and it was just in the middle of the road. So you're like, okay, do I go on the right side? Do I go on the left? When you see those always veer on the, the side of caution, go to the right. We didn't. We yeah. shot straight down the left hand side. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going in the opposite lane of traffic on, on a highway. highway. And then I realized everyone was doing it. So I didn't feel as bad, but <laughs> even the Vietnamese were making that mistake. But all of a sudden as that happened, we're like looking in front of us and we're like, oh my God, what, what is that? A guy had literally tried cutting across the highway and like a big Toyota truck had just smashed into and him. And he's on a scooter with his girlfriend, sister, I don't know. It and was, guys. It was horrible. Probably the roughest thing I've ever seen in my life. I wanted to cry and vomit at the same time. So a buddy of mine had warned me that when accidents happen, sometimes in Asia, people will just gather around and not actually do anything. A, because they don't know what to do, but B, because it's just kind of how they do things. Like you'll have which, one or two people that help, but everyone else just kind of stands and stares. Which I'm gonna be honest, I don't blame them because speaking from my own experience, to explain in the condition that this gentleman was in, the poor soul, he had he was covered from head to toe in his blood, had blood coming out of his mouth, his wrists were so broken that like they were attached with skin, but they were deformed. His whole entire body looked unnatural. If it wasn't scraped up and bleeding, it was a bruise. And granted, he had just gotten in the accident, but he got hit so hard that it was that bruise. His I, face was cut up. It was, oh, it was, it was bad. He had a massive gash. He's going to spend quite a few weeks in the hospital. Yeah. Um, but think what was good to see was he kind of took the impact from his girlfriend who was sitting on the back. So she didn't get as badly banged up. She was still out of it. She was completely concussed, had For no sure idea concussed. what was going on. Blood all over her too. Bruises oh. all over her body. I think she had it a was, broken leg because she tried getting up and then collapsed on the floor, but it could yeah, have been the it shock. Was rough. And then if you look at the picture, you can literally see where the guy just, his body imprinted on the hood of the car. But I guess we really tell that story because 
we were supposed to be in Ninbin for three days and I was one of two people that helped and the other guy kept trying to rotate this kid's spine. This kid just got hit head on by a car. By a car, in a on scooter, a highway. On a highway. And this guy's trying to rotate him and he's not holding him still. So I literally just got the kid up on his side, like held him there. And then as soon as we found a taxi, cause the ambulance was like nowhere to be found. So we, we got a taxi and taxi driver was like, put him in the car, put him in the car. So we rolled him onto his back and then we had to like literally just lift him into the truck. Yeah. We got blood everywhere and it was just, it was just like, yeah. best of luck, buddy. Afterwards, literally Dania was covered in blood. I had to literally grab our water bottle and use the rest of it to wipe the blood off of him. I don't blame those people who were just staring because I, Annette, would have no idea what to do for this person. I don't know if putting water on him to like wipe some of the blood off would help or if he would just choke on the water. I wouldn't want to touch him because so much of him looked broken. I didn't want yeah. to make the situation worse. So frankly, like, Thank God for you. Daniel's my hero, and you guys will hear a lot <laughs> about you. how much I love him and how great <laughs> he is. But seriously, braver than I am, and you really stepped up. So high five to you for just Thank being you. an awesome human, because that was hard. I appreciate it. So that. meant to be, glad we're safe. Yeah. Definitely uh, reminded of my mortality <laughs> after that trip. Exactly. Side note, if you guys are coming to Vietnam and you're planning to ride a motorbike, do not ride a motorbike without experience. Yeah. And do not ride a motorbike without understanding how the Vietnamese drive. It is very different and even the Vietnamese get in accidents. So keep that in mind when you guys are coming. But uh, like she said, it was meant to be. We were meant to come back. Yeah. Glad we're safe. Stay safe on your travels. Make sure that you click the subscribe button down below so that you can see more of our videos around the world. We promise we won't lose our wallet and actually show you the place next time. <laughs> right. Make sure that you share this video with your friends on social media and make sure that you just share the love. Come on now. Yeah. On that note, y'all, we will see you on our next adventure. Bye.